Welcome back, back out of the kayak, out in the open ocean. This is the first time for me being out in the open ocean this year. Um, typically in the Bay Area, um, a lot of the fishing seasons out in the open ocean start in April. So what I mean by those is rockfish season typically starts April 1st, and then salmon season typically starts the first Saturday in April. And those can be changing depending on the season. Sometimes they open early, sometimes they keep it closed a little bit later than usual. It all depends on the fish population and kind of what the Department of Fish and Wildlife determine is the right uh, time to open those seasons. But now, mid-April, and all those seasons are open. And I also didn't mention halibut, which doesn't have an uh, open and closed season, per se. Um, you can fish for them and you can keep them any time of the year. But during the winter, those fish hunker down and it's really hard to catch them. So uh, typically during the winter months, you don't find very many halibut out here on the ocean side. Sometimes you can get them in the bay, but out here on the ocean side, I'm not really sure. I don't know if they swim out to deep water or maybe they all go in the bay or maybe they just go in hibernation. I feel like, if you've already guessed, I think those fish just kind of don't feed very much during the winter months when it's really cold. They kind of like basically go into hibernation when I call it. But anyway, that's all on now. So today, I'm not really sure what I'm going to target. I think I'm going to target halibut first for a little bit in the morning um, and then just finish up with some rockfish or link out if I can't find any halibut. So uh, first thing before all that is said and done, first I need to catch some bait. So I didn't bring any bait today. I did bring a couple of swim baits as like a last resort, but I would like to catch some live bait. I'm going through a little kelp bed here. But I'm using a sabiki this morning to try and catch some live bait. Um, I'm going to try to find some anchovies here in the morning. Um, or maybe some smelt if I can find them. Whatever I can find. I just need something live, something that's going to be swimming down there, and something that's going to entice their halibut or early kind of bite. Another challenge in early season, in April, you know, early May, those kind of times of the year, uh, another challenge is finding live bait. So typically early season when the water's still cold, um, bait can be a little scarce. So I think that's going to be our main challenge really is actually finding some bait. But I also like to think once the bait is scarce or it's hard for you to find, it's probably also hard for the big predatory fish to find, the halibut, lynx, god, rockfish, all that stuff. So if you find some bait, present it to those fish, they should be pretty hungry today. They probably haven't eaten very much as of late. So we'll see if it all pans out. Like I said, we're going to be using the sabiki first to try and get some live bait, and uh, then we'll move on to the bigger fish. And, uh, yeah, we'll see if we can get them there. quick break in the action, I want to thank Catchco for sponsoring today's video. They've been a huge supporter of this channel for a long time, and I'm really thankful that they are sponsoring today's video. If you want to get any of the terminal gear that I use in this video, fluorocarbon leaders, swivels, hooks, treble hooks, as well as a ton of other stuff, check them out via the link in the description. I highly recommend while you're at it, looking at the Carl's Club. You get a ton of free perks, including free shipping, new early releases, um, that you can access before any other average Joe wants to get them, um, as well as much more. Definitely, I recommend checking it out. I'll leave a link down in the description. And if you haven't ordered from them before, make sure you use the promo code DIEHARD to get a nice little discount on your first order. So thank you again to Catchco for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's see if we can go find some fish. Bad news, couldn't find any bait. I think it's just too early, the water's too cold, there's just not any bait around. But like I said earlier, brought it back up, brought some swim baits, so I'm gonna start tossing those. And maybe if I get lucky, maybe I'll find some bait while I'm just kind of floating around here tossing swim baits. By the way, there are fishing rod sleeves on my website if you wanna get those. I didn't bring a lot because I wasn't planning to do this, but all right, so. Big hammer swim bait, this is probably like a five inch or so, and a two ounce jig head. Um, so I just like to line up the jig head like that. Put it that side so you guys can see. I'm just kind of take note of where that hook point should come out so that this jig, or so that this swim bait will line up straight with the jig head. So um, I think if I ride it right along this little blue line, right, right there, and then come out about right there, this jig or this swim bait should look pretty good on this jig head. Just like that. That looks pretty good. 
And then we'll tie this on. And definitely lingcod or halibut both eat this very willingly. So if we can put this in front of a halibut or a lingcod's mouth, I gotta believe they're gonna eat this. Shot. I'm the swim bait. Doesn't feel that big, but anything is welcome right now. Probably a rockfish of some sort, I would guess. Oh no, it's a little ling. Baby ling. Alright, first ling of the season. All right, first fish of the day, little baby ling. Target species, but a little bit too small. These need to be 22 inches in order to keep. But uh, nevertheless, first one of the season. Hopefully they get a little bigger from here. That fish bit like three or four times. It was like pecking, pecking, and I just kept slow roll. When I use this swim bait, I like to slow roll it right off the rocks. Slow roll, slow roll. And they'll come back for it. The lingcod are super aggressive. You know, as long as you don't stab them with the hook, I mean, they'll hit it infinite amount of times. All right, first piece of bait, a little shiner. Pretty surprised to see him out this deep, but we'll take it. My only piece of live bait here. I'm just gonna get him down while he's lively. I'm hoping that a halibut takes this guy, but I know there's a lot of rocks out here, so it's very possible this guy gets gobbled up by a ling. But we're gonna find out. All right. Not much, but we'll see if we can turn him into a halibut. See what happens. Well, I just drifted for halibut for about, I don't even know, an hour and a half maybe. Absolutely nothing. No bites, no nothing. So I think we're going to switch gears and go for rockfish here. I still have that live bait on here, so I'll probably pick him up. We'll head over some reefs. We'll drop that one down. I don't think it's going to last very long, and once that's gone, We'll just throw the swim bait behind me. I just think it's a little bit too early. Water's still a little bit too cold for these halibut, so that's okay. Let's go get some link cut. All right. Let's see what kind of rockfish we can find. Hoping for a ling, but I'll take some rockfish as well. And you never know, there could be halibut over here on the reefs too, so. Gotta be ready for anything. A lot of lingcod right here. Right on. Yeah, that's a fish. That's a fish. Oh, there he is. That's a fish. Right, we're gonna go for it. Feels like a decent one. Oh, feels like a pretty good one, actually. Right on the live bait, first drift through there. Just hammered it. Yeah. There he goes. There he goes. Pretty good fish, I think. There's a little peak there. It went from 40 feet up to like 35, which is not much, but 
it's enough to hold fish for sure. This feels like a pretty good one. crazy but there he goes had him up to about 20 feet and now he just went back down to 40 right back down to the bottom I can see him on the fish finder too it's a pretty nice fish I think I want to get this one to the boat start off my lingcod season right good one. Oh, that's a nice fish. Nope, not yet. Not yet. Better get this one. Come on now. Take your time. You're doing great. Thanks. Thanks. Got him. I wasn't expecting to start off the rockfish season with such a bang, but that's a really nice one. I'd say he's probably around 30, 31, 32 inches, something like that. Nice big blue ling. I'm gonna get him on the stringer here first and foremost. Got him nice with that front hook. Right, put him on the stringer before I even take that out. Okay. That one bait, we only had one live bait and that's the one that got him right there. Take a look at this guy. What a way to start off with my rockfish season. That's a nice one right there. Big old blue ling. So he looks kind of weird. If you've never seen a ling cod before, some of them have this blue color. Probably, I'd say probably like 30% of them, something like that. And uh, it's totally normal, um, but also totally weird. When you fillet them up, the meat is also like this same bluish color. Um, and it looks really weird, but when you cook it up, it actually just turns back to a normal. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference between this and a uh, regular colored lingcod, but I mean, that's a good one, especially for inshore on a kayak. I'd say he's probably around 30, 31 inches maybe. I'll say 30, let's see. Get the official measurement here. Oh, 31, it's right the first time. One final look at him. Unfortunately, we don't have any more live bait, so we're gonna go to the swim bait right now, but anyways, that's a solid fish right there. We'll bonk him and bleed him and uh, see if we can get number two. That worked out very nicely. Immediately once I hit this reef, didn't even have it marked or anything, just kind of randomly pulled up to the spot. And then right when I pulled up to the spot, well, I did mark a little bit when I was pulling up here. So I, I marked this and then said, oh, this looks like a good spot. Dropped it down and then this boat also came up next to me. And I guess they've been fishing this for a little while. They, they had drifted off, but when they came back, they were telling me, oh, this is a good spot. They've been getting quite a few fish here. So anyways, seems like a good, Little spot here. See if we can get our swim bait down there and see if we can get another one. All right, so I circled back around. Obviously, uh, with the GPS, we're able to just get right back up on that same little spot there. So now that I've pulled up on it, we're gonna cast in the swim bait, same swim bait that we were using earlier. And we'll see if we can get another one off of this little, this little reef. Yeah, I said it went up from like 40 to 35, so it's only like a five foot increase or decrease, whatever. Um, but if you think about it, like a five foot boulder on the bottom of the ocean, uh, that's pretty substantial. So it's definitely big enough uh, that a lingcod could sit up on top of that rock. 
So I'm just gonna move this little swim bait right over the top of that rock. See if there's another fish on it. And it's definitely a fun way to catch them. A little bit more, uh, you know, more hook set than the live bait. Well, actually, I like the hook set, the live bait too, but you get to feel the whole, the whole action with this, this setup. So it's a little more exciting at times. That was just a rock. It's starting to rain a little bit out here. All right, that's gonna wrap it up for today. Just a short video, quick trip out here. Um, I tried the swim bait for a little while, didn't have any luck with it, and then I actually tried to catch some more live bait for a little while and couldn't find anything. So live bait is super scarce out here, but it's like I was saying, if you find one and you get it down there, those ling cod and, and presumably halibut if you find one, uh, they should be pretty hungry. So if you can get one down there, I think you got a good chance of hooking up. But no more fish for us today, just one undersized ling and one nice ling cod. It ended up being 31 incher. So I'll take that one home. And you know what? It turned out to be a really nice day out here. I was a little skeptical in the morning. It was a little, there was a little chop on the water and then it started raining. But uh, after, well, it wasn't really raining. It was like a really, really heavy fog. Um, but after that cleared up, as you can see, there's like absolutely no wind out here. Um, super calm, not too many boats out as it being early in the season. Um, I think most people are focused on salmon right now, uh, but unfortunately it's a little bit out of range for a kayak. Otherwise I'd be doing the same exact thing. And once again, thank you to Catchco for sponsoring today's video. Highly recommend checking them out via the link in the description. And don't forget to use that promo code for a little discount. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.